<laughs> you know it's starting because I went like this. All right, I am Sherry Alberts from the website thewateringmouth.com. Mm, like that, like that. Um, I have a healthy food website which is all about um, eating super, super healthy foods to have longevity and stick around for the longest amount possible without disease. Wateringmouth.com, go check it out if you're interested. Today, I want to do a Facebook Live about jackfruit because it is a very special fruit that you don't find often and it's hard um, to get any information on it, especially if you see it and you have no idea what it is, what do you do when you get it home? So <laughs> I'm going to show you guys um, how to open it, where it comes from, all that kind of good stuff. And so let's dive in because it's a pretty interesting fruit. So I'm going to set this camera up here. I'm going to have a full on little demo going today, which is really cool. So as you can see, and I hope you guys can hear me well. Um, actually, let me know if you can hear me well. <laughs> um, comment below. Let me know if you can hear me okay. If you can't hear me, um, tell me and I'll figure something out. Feel free to ask questions during. I'm not, I can't guarantee I'll be able to see them or answer, but I'll answer them after the uh, presentation for sure. So the first thing you need to do when you get a jackfruit is put your hair back because <laughs> they're big and they're messy. So jackfruit tend to come from um, Southeast Asia. That's sort of where they originate from. And if you know any people from Southeast Asia, they will already know what this is. This is one fruit. This whole thing, this is one fruit, okay? This is something you can definitely lift weights with. This is a, this one right here is a 15 pound jackfruit, which is actually not as big as um, some of them that I've had before. Um, so Aaron Christine says, good luck on cutting that thing. Yep, so I'll show you how I do it and hopefully I'll be able to get through it. Um, so as I say, they come from Southeast Asia and they are absolutely delicious. Uh, if you kind of talk about what the flavor is, people often say they're a mix between um, sort of bubble gum and like, like juicy fruit type gum. Other people do not like them. So um, the other interesting thing is they have a very pungent smell. My brother actually thinks they smell like mold. I think they smell like sweet amazingness. So like right now, this one is definitely ripe and I can tell because um, I can smell it. It's a very pungent smell. Sweet smelling to me. My brother doesn't like the smell as much, but to each his own. Um, see these darker spots on it. This is actually a good sign. And if you sort of touch it a little bit, it's um, kind of soft and that's what you want. So I get a disclosure, full disclosure, okay? This jackfruit, the, the problem with jackfruit is that if you buy them in the store, typically you can find them in really nice health food markets. Um, like I got this one at Whole Foods and there, it, it, there are no jackfruits in other Whole Foods in the area. I had to go to a specific Whole Foods to get this. Um, you can also find them in Asian markets, which is the best place to look for them. And it's also the best place to look for some other amazing fruits and vegetables and things you've never seen before. I highly encourage you to go to your local Asian markets, check things out, see what they have, because they have all really cool stuff in there. Um, so sometimes you can find jackfruit in there. You can, you can find jackfruit sometimes frozen. You can also find canned jackfruit, which um, I haven't had the canned stuff before. Of course, it's canned, so it's not really you know, fresh, but they use it a lot in cooking. Um, I'm gonna show you the inside of this in just a second, but let me tell you about the precautions to take first, okay? So, first thing you want when you have a jackfruit, you need gloves, <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why. So when a jackfruit is not ripe at all, it will have a lot of latex in it. And what's that? It's like, um, so if you have a latex, a latex allergy, that's something to watch out for actually. But it has this really sticky kind of um, like, well, rubbery latex, weird stuff inside of the jackfruit. So when you open it up, you'll see a lot of those strings and it'll be real stringy, stuff like that. It's kind of difficult to work with if it's not really ripe. The riper it gets, the less latex it has. So that's why you want to have ones that are real ripe. But you still can get some latex in the ones that are ripe too. So you want to take precautions. Now here's the precautions that I take. I have a really nice cutting board here that I don't want to screw up. And I have a really nice knife that I don't want to screw up. Before I actually bought a specific knife, $5 from Walmart, just for jackfruit. But I don't have it anymore. So what I'm going to do is um, actually use the trick, which is a bunch of coconut oil. So I'm going to take just a bunch of coconut oil here, I'm going to slather it all over my board. And what this is going to do is um, make it so that the latex doesn't stick to your board. 
because if you if it sticks then you're gonna ruin your cutting board and it'll be really difficult it, it's almost impossible to get it off with a knife it's a little bit different I have had some success in getting the latex off of a knife but I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna wipe it with a bunch of coconut oil that way that latex won't stick as well and it will be easier to clean so I'll just give you a little information about how to clean once you're done I've had success with taking paper towel, wet paper towel, and using a ton of dish soap and just wiping, wiping, wiping with dish soap um, and then just <laughs> keep wiping, <laughs> basically. Okay, so here's the fun part. And here's also the scary part for me doing this live because I don't know if this jackfruit's going to be any good. Um, I think it is based on the things that I can, see, can smell and see about it but it could be terrible. I have definitely invested in some jackfruit that were not, um, <laughs> not really ready to be eaten. So I'm gonna show you what to do. Now listen to this. Nice, huh? By the way, you can ask me any questions. I can see the questions down there. So if you wanna make any comments or ask any questions, feel free to do so. So I'm gonna cut into this baby. We'll actually see if I can cut into it. I'm not sure if I can, <laughs> but uh, okay, here we go. This, yeah, oh, easy. I'm just going to slice right in. You can see I'm just slicing in like this. Slice down. Now, the problem with jackfruit is the middle. So hopefully I can get through the middle. I think I'll at least just take out the outside. Um, got some sirens going on out there. Hold on. This is live, folks. <laughs> All right, so looks like I'm getting through it. This is good. Okay. Are you ready? We're gonna open this sucker up. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> you guys, oh my gosh. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let's see where we're at. Mm hmm Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it's been so long since I had one of these. First time I ever discovered these, I lived in Sarasota, Florida. And they have them at the farmer's market down there. And I had one for the first time and it was just ridiculous. I mean, when you get one that's really ripe, this one isn't as ripe as I want it to be, but it still tastes amazing. You can still get that flavor. Um, thank you, Mariah. That's really sweet. Okay. So here's what it looks like on the inside. I'm going to bring it over to you a little bit because I want to see if you guys can see this latex. Okay. Now, here it is. Now, the, I cut down the middle here. This is the sort of um, difficult part to get through, but this one was really ripe, so it's no problem. But can you see these little beads of white here? That's latex. So uh, honestly, if this one was a little bit riper, maybe three days or something, probably would be a tiny bit sweeter. But look, look at all this latex coming out. Do you see that? All right, let me show you something. Watch this from the side. Wait, can I get it to... Oh, it's not really doing the latex thing. Um, I think it's because I'm wearing gloves and I got coconut oil on them. But this would be all like getting all rubbery and weird. <laughs> just trust me on that one. Um, but you can see how it all comes out. So this is the kind of stuff that's just going to get straight stuck to your knife and make it very, very difficult to use. So now about a jackfruit a little bit. Let's talk about this a little bit. So when you have a jackfruit, you have two parts that are edible. You have these white strand-like things. Can you see these? These strands, these are edible, uh, but um, not in the way you might think. Then you have these little pods here that are also edible, and this is the actual fruit part. Okay, so I'm gonna set this down because this thing is actually seven and a half pounds and I, do <laughs> I don't need this much of a workout. Okay, so I'm gonna show you on this side actually. This is sort of a cross section of one of them. Here, I guess I have to get a little bit closer. You know what, I'm gonna cut this sucker in half. So I can bring it over to you. We can talk about this without me um, dying of muscle fatigue. Okay. So if you look at the side of this, you can see all this fruit. This is all fruit here, which is really nice because a lot of the times, see what happens is as a jackfruit ripens, this part here, this strand, these strands turn into this fruit. So, of course, this happens on the inside of the fruit and you can't see it, but what you're left with is a ton of awesome fruit. But it would start out as being all of these weird strands of, um, I think this is latex too, I'm not sure, but it's just all these really strange strands here. So what happens is when you have the fruit, you've got these pods and they have these big seeds inside, okay? 
You see that seed right there? Now, actually I lied. There's three parts to a jackfruit that are edible. There's the fruit part, the latex things, and there's also the seeds. I forgot that I cooked these up one time. These are really actually delicious. They're kind of like chestnuts. So all you do is take the seeds, um, rinse them off, then you can bake them in the oven like you would bake chestnuts, maybe three, 400, um, 350, 400, something like that, for about, I think it's about 15, 20 minutes. And um, then after they're done, you just let them cool, eat them just like a chestnut. You just pop them in your mouth like any other type of seed or almond or something. And they're so nutty and delicious. They are amazing. I really, really love them. Um, Aaron Christine asks, assuming they won't have jackfruit in Missouri, where are they grown? Are they frozen before transport? So it kind of depends. Some of them will come straight from Southeast Asia. The ones that I used to get in Florida, they came all the way from Mexico. So um, they would be grown in Mexico. Now, some people actually have jackfruit trees in their yards in Florida, but um, the ones that I found that were really good were actually the ones that came over from Mexico. They're generally not organic, so if you're really, really into organic, that could be a problem. Um, but yeah, so okay, so a couple final things about this. So the problem with jackfruit is, first of all, it's kind of expensive. So here, this one was a dollar a pound, and this was 15 pounds, so about 15 bucks. If you ask them to cut it at the store, they're gonna charge you double. Um, so here, they, charged, they would have charged me $2 a pound, but in Florida, they were a lot more expensive. I used to pay like five bucks a pound or something for a jackfruit, and I would buy like 20 pound jackfruits. So one difficult thing about them is you don't exactly know when they're ripe, so um, you kind of just have to hope for the best. They are amazing tasting, though. They're really something to experience in life. Um, so the other thing is that when you get them home and you're ready to eat them, you ca it kind of is a process, because you have to go through and sort of cut them open and um, clean all the fruit out, clean all the outside out, and then um, you kind of pick out all the pods and pick out all the stuff you want. So let me show you a little bit of this. Um, let's see, Jeff was just asking what the flavor of the fruit portion tastes like. Yeah, it's, it's actually been, people actually say it tastes like um, juicy fruit gum. So you have to have a really good one. This one's pretty decent, but it's not as good as some of them I had before. You'll know more because they'll be super um, like orangish, orangish yellow, a little bit deeper of a color. Um, and they're so, they are really juicy too, which is really wonderful. Oh, Nora says she grew up in the Philippines. Oh, she's so lucky, so lucky. Okay, so here's what the inside looks like a little bit closer up. So you've got these pods here and you can see this, um, the latex strands are kind of hanging out around the outside. You can just pick those off. They come off really, really easily. And then you're left with this fruit here. So I would just pick off all the pot or all the latex here. And I would take out the middle section where the pod was. And you're left with the fruit. That's it. Then what I usually do is I'll take the actual fruit part and I'll put it into a huge bowl. Then I have another bowl over here where I would maybe store the latex or the strands and you can put that in the freezer and save it for later. Then I have another bag, like a trash bag that I use to get rid of the outside part here. So it's kind of a, it's, it kind of reminds me of like Thanksgiving, you know, where after everyone's done eating the turkey, you kind of have to like do some work and get all the things off the bones and stuff. You, it really does take some work. But what's really cool is you can freeze everything. So you can freeze the fruit. I usually, what I'll do is I'll take an hour or so clean up the whole fruit, clean everything off. I'll have some big um, plastic bags with all the fruit in it. I'll put that in the freezer and it freezes so well, I have to tell you. What you can do is just take it out of the freezer, put it into a bowl and let it come to room temperature and it is exactly like it was when it came out of the fruit. It's amazing. Um, then you can also freeze these strands and so here's what's really, really interesting. I'm gonna take a couple of these off and show you. This is what I think is so cool, and this is why they have it canned at the Asian markets. Um, and, that, and generally, you do see it canned a lot. So these, um, these strands are really, really strange. I have to say, the first time you see them, they're really weird. They're kind of tubular, um, and they have a strange texture. But I have to say, and here's the secret to it. If you go to a vegan restaurant nowadays, typically they'll have this, and this is pulled pork for a vegan. And I got to tell you, as a vegan and as someone who loves meat, like I absolutely love steak, I love pork, I love all those things, I just don't eat it anymore. When you cook this and use barbecue sauce and turn it into, or, or taco sauce or whatever it is, 
it is exactly like pulled pork. It tastes just like it in your mouth. It feels just like it. The texture, it's amazing. Um, and so if you ever do go to a vegan restaurant, I'm telling you, you won't even be able to tell the difference between the two because it's so, so incredible. Um, so that a lot of the times they'll use it as a meat substitute or something um, in that way. So you can also, what I've done before, you can also take the seeds and um, plant them in some soil. You just plant them probably about five or six inches deep in soil. You could put like put like five or ten of them in, in some soil, cover them up with about five or six inches of um, more dirt, water them, I think it's like water them every day. I did this in Florida just as an experiment, and they will start to grow their own jackfruit trees. And they work really good, like they grow so well. And um, they're a beautiful little tree too, and they, they'll grow pretty quickly. It just takes about probably two or three weeks before you'll start to see some sprouts. So you can do that with them as well. So that is about all I wanted to say about this fruit here. Let me just get to the camera here so I can look you guys in the eyes. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. Manny has a, um, a suggestion. Try it with a Saba banana, banana wrap with egg roll wrapper and deep fry it. Oh God, roll it in brown sugar and deep fry it. That sounds like something I would totally eat. Thank you for that suggestion, Manny. Um, okay, so that's all I have today. Let me just see here. Um, feel free to share this video with your friends if you like, if you think it might be fun for them to watch and just see what jackfruit is all about. Um, and also when this video is done, click on the live notifications button so you can get notifications of my future Facebook live events. And also find me on other social media networks. Find me on YouTube. I do daily vlogs about everything I eat and things I'm learning about nutrition. Um, and also Instagram, I do my live updates as well as on Snapchat. And then of course, sign up for my email newsletter on thewateringmouth.com slash email hyphen newsletter and you can get a free PDF with lots of healthy recipes. So thank you so much for watching. Find me elsewhere and feel free to ask more questions down below and I'll answer them when I can. Thank you, bye.